Hello everyone and welcome back. I am as always Inquisitor Ara, and this is how to roleplay in the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at the Dunmer of Morrowind. The Dunmer, or Dark Elves, are the ash-skinned people who live in the shadow of Red Mountain and the moonlit known as Bardow. While they are mistrusted and mistrust the many disparate races of Tamriel, they are easily considered some of the best battle mages it has ever produced, noted for their skill with a balanced integration of sword, bow, and destruction magic. But to really begin to understand the Dunmer, we need to take a look at their history. Once upon a time, all Mer looked the same. These Mer were called the Old Mer, and they spread across Tamriel when they settled on its shores. While many would grow and change over time, most would remain on Somerset Isle and retain the golden skin and eyes that the Alt Mer currently boast. However, at some point in the past, either during the Dawn or the Merithic Eras, a dissident movement sprang up in Somerset. A group of Aldmer, who wished to continue both Daedra and Ancestor Worship, were forced to flee Somerset and were led by the prophet Veloth from Somerset to Resdane, now known as Morrowind. Along the way, Veloth passed the lessons he was taught by the good Daedra, Boethia, Mephala, and Azura, then enabled them to survive their exodus and eventually arrive in their new home. It was during these days that they became known as the Chimer, or Changed Ones. However, the true change didn't come for many hundreds of years. The Dunmer, as we know them now, were born from the ashes of the Battle of Red Mountain in the 700th year of the First Era. While not much is known about the actual conflict, what is known is simple. The Dwemer, longtime enemies of the Chimer, were defeated and subsequently vanished. The last Chimeri king, Lord Inderil Nerevar, was slain, and the Tribunal of Living Gods, known as Almsivi, rose to power. What really happened to Nerevar is still unknown to the vast majority of Dunmeri people. But what is clear is that Azura did not take kindly to the shift in power from Daedra worship to veneration of the new tribunal, Vivek, Sothasil, and Almalexia. As punishment, the Chimer were cursed, their skin turned to ash, and their eyes turned blood red, and thus the Dunmer were born. As of the current version of ESO, this power structure is still very much intact. Since then, the Dunmer have largely been defined by their environment and their society is extremely ethnocentric. The majority of the power in Morrowind is divided between the Five Great Houses. Also known as the Grand Council of Morrowind, the Five Great Houses make up Dunmer nobility and politics. Each house holds a province within Morrowind and each has its own ideals and beliefs. House Indril controls the central eastern province of Morrowind's mainland. This house was Nerevar's house and is largely conservative, holding to the teachings of Almsivi and greatly opposing any change from the current tribunal lifestyle and religion. House Redoran controls the western border of mainland Morrowind and parts of Vardenvel. This house values warrior ideals such as honor, valor, piety, and duty. Members of House Redoran are required to at least wield a bow and maintain their own armor, and they greatly respect duty and hierarchy, first to the tribunal, then to the house, and then to family. House Telvanni controls the eastern areas of Morrowind and holds some lands in Vardenfell. House Telvanni is a house of magisters and mages, and that is their primary focus. They often withdraw from conflicts and seek only the betterment and advancement of themselves through magic, going so far as to extend their lives for thousands of years. House Drez controls the area bordering Black Marsh to the south and are primarily farmers and slavers. They typically run great plantations tended to by slaves and provide slaves to the rest of Morrowind. But with the pact's banning of slavery, House Drez has needed to resort to illegal slave trade. They also prefer guerrilla warfare over standard formation-based combat and are the most traditional of the houses. And finally, there's House Halalu, which controls the central west areas of mainland Morrowind and some parts of Vardenfell. 
They are largely motivated by wealth and capital, making them excellent traders and merchants. They also excel at thievery, bribery, and deception, be it in person or in business. To facilitate both sides of Halalu's coin, this house is the most open to working with outsiders and non-Dunmer. There is one other fairly significant group of people in Morrowind, the Ashlanders, or the Velothi. While widely oppressed and nomadic by nature, they've been shunted to the poorest areas of Morrowind. However, the Ashlanders do not venerate Almsivi, claiming that the current tribunal murdered the last Khmeri king and attained a divinity with evil purpose. Instead, these Dunmeri worship the original tribunal of Boethia, Amephala, and Azuna, and they carry a prophecy that Nerevar will be reborn to right the wrongs of the past. But the ultimate power in Dunmer society is their religion. They are a theocratic society ruled by the tribunal. Almalexia, Mother Morrowind, is the anticipation of Boethia and represents the Dunmer ideal of mercy. Vivek, the warrior poet, is the anticipation of Mephala, embodying the ideal of mastery. And Sothasil, the mystery of Morrowind, is the anticipation of Azura, representing mystery. They are referred to as the Anticipations, as it is told that the gods foresaw their coming. However, when the tribunal proclaimed themselves above the Daedric princes, for Daedra rebelled against the notion and began to cause trouble and strife in Morrowind. These four Daedra became known as the Four Corners of the House of Troubles. Molek Ball represents the impurity of the bloodlines and seeks to corrupt the Dunmer's pure blood. Mehrun's Dagon represents natural destruction and tests the Dunmer's very will to endure and survive. Malakath represents the enemies of the Dunmer, invasion and war, constantly testing the Dunmer for physical weakness, and Sheogorath represents madness and seeks to instill paranoia, fear, and insanity into those weak of will. Now that we've covered all of that, let's take a look at some role-playing tips for playing a Dunmer. The Dunmer almost as a whole are ethnocentric to a fault and distrustful of outsiders. The relatively peaceful status quo is delicate balance of political machinations and assassinations sanctioned through the Morag Tong. Don't worry, you'll be getting a video on them soon. And general backstabbery. The average Dunmer PC likely belongs to one of the great houses, but it is more than feasible for you to be an Ashlander, although it makes much more sense story-wise for you to belong to a house as an Ashlander has no reason to help Vivek. According to a lot of the quests and the texts and how people treat you in Morrowind, regardless of whether or not you're actually Dunmeri, they treat you as an outsider, so you could use that as your justification for being an Ashlander. Now keep in mind that all of this takes place long before the events of The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, so the player might know how all of this will play out, but the character most certainly will not. To really be able to pull this off, you only really need to know how to do one thing, and that's act like you're arrogant. All Dunmer look down on all outsiders, and that's just the way it is. Even the Ashlanders do this, so they are a little bit more open about working with outlanders than most house Dunmer would be. The easiest way to roleplay a Dunmer is to figure out where in Dunmer society it is that your character fits. If you are a house Dunmer, which house do you belong to? Because the house that you belong to is going to go a long way to establishing the kinds of personality traits and quirks that you're want, going to want to demonstrate to other people. House Redoran is very stoic, very martial, very much about duty and honor and vigilance. Whereas House Lalu is going to be significantly more sly and sneaky and backstabby, they're going to be the smooth talkers, whereas House Telvanni, who technically has not signed the Ebonheart Pact, they're going to be extremely withdrawn, but they're going to be very intelligent. They're going to be able to do the, the magical arcano babble to keep up and display their great ingenuity and intelligence. 
non Hal Stunmer, aka the Velothi, is what they're going to call themselves. They don't call themselves the Ashlanders, they refer to themselves as Velothi after Prophet Veloth. They're very much opposed to everything that's going on in Morrowind right now, especially given this current expansion, with Vivek losing his, his, losing his power, having the heroes run around and try and figure out what's happening to it. No Ashlander in their right minds would go out of their way to help a usurper god figure out what's going on. But at the same time, because most of the NPCs treat you as an outsider anyways, it makes a lot of sense if that's the direction that you decided that you wanted to go in. Anyways, that is going to be it for me for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you like what you see and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button, comment below, and subscribe. Make sure to ring that little bell to stay up to date on my new content. If you want to donate, make sure you check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks again so much for watching. Have a great week, have a great weekend, and I will see you again in Tamriel.